Before we start today's video, I'd just like to give a shout out to Microsoft for never working. When I was about to make this video, I booted up the Minecraft launcher, the one that we've had for years, and I noticed that apparently there's a new improved launcher. So I went and I downloaded it. It's now on the Microsoft Store, and it just doesn't work at all. I click play and it opens nothing up. So shout out to Microsoft for literally making nothing work. This is why everyone still plays Java Edition. So for this helpful guide video, obviously you're going to need ray tracing Minecraft shaders or quote unquote path tracing. Uh, I'm gonna be using the SUS Minecraft ray tracing shaders today. So the ones by Sonic Ether, they're free. I'll link a download down below. Anyways, obviously to run shaders, you need Optifine. And I think it goes without saying, you're gonna wanna allocate, uh, you know, a decent amount of RAM. I have a whole tutorial that's separate on how to allocate RAM to Minecraft. So I'll link that down below. I'm not gonna get into how to, you know, completely allocate RAM to Minecraft, but you're gonna wanna allocate some RAM. So yeah, check that tutorial if you don't know how to do that, but allocate a little bit more RAM than normal because we're gonna be trying to run ray tracing shaders. All right, everybody, so welcome back to a Minecraft. Obviously, in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to optimize your Minecraft settings, your shader settings to get the best ray tracing performance or path tracing shader performance for SUS PTGI physically possible. I've done a video similar to this in the past. Uh, it was mainly focused on laptops though, and I think I can improve upon that video. So that's why I'm creating this video, whether you have a laptop or a low-end gaming PC, even a high-end gaming PC, or maybe even the new Steam Deck that is going to come out, which will be sort of like a gaming PC that's portable. Um, you know, th this video should help you guys out on uh, running ray tracing shaders for Minecraft Java Edition. So I've reset all of my video settings here for Minecraft. As you can see, everything's looking pretty default and pretty regular. We haven't even enabled the shaders yet. Just looking around Minecraft and sort of just, you know, playing Minecraft. Normally I'm getting around a thousand FPS or so on the default Minecraft settings. And when I go into my options, then go to video settings, shaders, and then enable the latest version of SUS PTGI HRR test 2.1. Uh, my frame rate is going to drop down significantly. Now I'm getting you know, around 150 or so, 145 FPS um, in Minecraft with these path tracing or ray tracing shaders enabled. So uh, yes, they significantly decrease your frame rate and that's why on a low end PC, you're gonna be struggling to get that good FPS. Um, but I'll show you some tips and we're gonna majorly, majorly increase our frame rate while still maintaining a beautiful image here with uh, Sonic Ether's beautiful, gorgeous ray tracing Minecraft shaders. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is go into our options, go into video settings and start just changing around some regular Optifine settings. First of all, we can go right into smooth lighting and just turn it completely off. You don't need smooth lighting and somehow uh, smooth lighting is like sort of running in the background even with these shaders, even though it's not necessary at all. So um, this will actually increase your performance. Just turn smooth lighting completely off. Now we're going to move down into details. Um, clouds we can turn completely off. I think they're off by default anyways, but it's a good idea just to leave them off. Make sure they're completely not running. Trees, if you don't mind the look of fast trees or smart trees, uh, you can use both of those options to improve frame rate. We can go ahead and turn fog off as well, even though fog is just disabled by the shaders in general. Um, dropped items we can leave on fast. Um, that's going to give you a tiny amount of performance. If you hate fast dropped items, you can leave it on fancy. It's not a huge deal. Same thing for translucent blocks. We can put that on fast and vignetting. We can leave that on fast as well. Rain and snow as well. You can set that to fast. It's going to give you a little bit of a performance boost. Uh, same thing with alternate blocks. Although I hate hate the look of non-alternating blocks, so I always leave alternating blocks on. Biome Blend, you can turn down to 3x3 three three or completely off uh, for the fastest performance, but I prefer it on 3x3. Three three. And also your entity distance, this changes how close uh, you can see uh, far away entities. Um, you can turn this down as well and save a little bit of frame rate as well. So all of these are little things, but they do add up over time and can smooth out your frame rate a lot, especially if you have a lower end PC. 
Uh, moving on to animations, as you can see, these are all the different animations for Minecraft. You can turn on and off whatever you feel is necessary. I like to have particles and animated different, you know, textures in Minecraft. So, um, you know, I really don't mess with any of these options, turning them on and off. But if you see any that you don't mind being off, it's a good idea to turn them off if you really don't care about it. Um, but the main uh, performance setting down here is the particles setting. As you can see, our particles are set to all. I can turn it down to decrease. This is going to net us a little bit of performance by using or creating less particles in the game. And you can turn it even down a little bit further to minimal and that will be your best performance possible so we'll leave it at minimal so we get the maximum frame rate with our shaders and in general you can change the graphic setting up here to fancy or fast I'm just gonna leave it on fancy because most of the things that this changes we have already messed with down here in the details and such um, but yes moving into quality not too many to change in here connected textures we can change to fast to save a little bit of performance or we can turn them off entirely and same thing for the rest of this like random entities we can turn off and might give us a little bit of performance um, but nothing too crazy you could in fact avoid the quality setting altogether performance is where we're going to see the most um, changes here render regions we're going to want to turn on smart animations we're going to want to turn on lazy chunk loading. I believe this only applies to servers, but you'll want to turn it on. I'm sure some of you are going to play on servers. Smooth FPS, um, you might want to turn on if you're getting big lag spikes. It can help out with that. I'm going to leave it off because it might mess with the uh, the frame rates here to show you, you know, scanning frame rates. Fast render will turn on, fast math, smooth world, and dynamic updates. We're also going to turn on here for the best performance. And finally, moving into other... I'm going to change the auto save time to 24 minutes. Um, this is just going to give us less sort of lag spikes, uh, less frequent lag spikes when the game tries to auto save. You can turn weather completely off if you think that's giving you some lag. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this setting. You can also mess with full screen resolutions and stuff, although I don't think that will be necessary when I show you guys one of the settings that we're going to change later in the video. Also, you can adjust your FOV to gain a little bit of frame rate. As you can see, if I turn my FOV all the way down, we get a little bit of a performance boost. I'm just going to leave it around 75 for now. So as you guys can see, we've messed around with that setting, and we're not really seeing too much of a performance difference. Um, again, this is a faster PC, so little things like that aren't going to make a huge change in performance. We're going to also come back to this setting of render distance, because this ideally is something we're going to change after we've changed every other setting. Moving into our shader settings. There's this setting called render quality, which we will change later, but this is where we're going to net a lot of performance as well. And this specifically is because of the way SUS PTGI adjusts things. But yes, we're going to go down here in the corner to shader options. And we're going to start by going to shadow options. Dynamic held lights, we can turn off. This is basically, you know, when we hold a torch in our hand, is it going to emit light around us so we can sort of move throughout the cave? If that's something you want on, you can totally leave this on, but technically it does add lag. Um, another thing that we can change is the shadow distance. If I lower this down, we're going to have higher quality shadows closer, but lower quality shadows farther away and I like to turn it down to 80. I think it gives us a little bit of performance boost because of the lower quality shadows farther away. Moving down to ray tracing options, this is where we're going to start to see some more benefits. So reflection trace length, as you can see, we have it set to medium currently. We can actually turn this down to low and it's still going to look pretty good. Although, you know, of course, you're going to see a, a little bit of a difference there. You might not notice it. You might notice it if you notice it and you absolutely hate it. You can turn it off, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it on low because really, I don't think it's too noticeable at all. And I still think the shaders look absolutely gorgeous. We also have this option called GI filter quality. You can turn this low to gain a little bit of performance as well. This geometry trace quality is going to affect slabs and stairs and stuff. So if you want to turn it completely off, you'll gain a little bit of performance as well. But I would consider this something I'd probably leave on too anyways. So moving into atmospheric options, we can turn off clouds and GI. I don't think this makes a huge difference. It's just sort of allows the clouds to impact the color of the ray tracing and stuff like that. It's not really a huge deal. Atmospheric god rays you can also turn off, but I think it's a big part of the shader, so I'm going to leave that on. You can also turn off these settings as well, but 
I think that they, again, they're a big part of the shader, so I leave those on. Now we're gonna move into post-processing settings. Motion blur, you can turn off for a little bit of a frame rate increase. And we're gonna move up to this option of anti-aliasing. And I think this is where you're gonna see a pretty big performance gain. If we go into here, we can see FXAA passes. This sort of smooths out um, the environment. And honestly, I think Minecraft looks better as a sharper game. So I turn FXAA passes to zero. And this game also uses Texel anti-aliasing, I believe, um, to sort of upscale the game, and that's sort of how he gets it to run pretty decently in the first place. So this allows you to change the render resolution, which is what I was uh, discussing earlier here in the shaders. Um, we can actually change this render quality setting. We can basically render the game at a lower quality and then ha use anti-aliasing to upscale it. So this doesn't take forever. I've set my shaders to the internal ones here, which allows me to change these settings really fast um, without reloading the shaders every time. So I'm going to go over here to render quality and I'm going to continuously click it. Um, we are not going to want anything above one. We're going to want to go below one, if anything. So we'll see how the game looks at 0.5 render quality, so it's really going to be trying to upscale it. It's not going to look its best, but you're going to gain a lot of performance from this. So as you can see, everything's looking pretty blurry. It's not really looking its best, but we've gained a lot of performance. In fact, we've doubled our frame rate here. Um, so, you know, we're getting around 300 FPS or so. Most people don't like this, um, but you have to remember this would look a lot worse without Texel anti-aliasing, which is attempting sort of to upscale this and make the game look a little bit sharper. If we up the render quality to 0.6, um, things are starting to get a little bit sharper. Our frame rate's dropping a little. Still very good frame rates, though. I can imagine some of you won't, won't mind playing uh, like this. It's not too, too bad. I'd consider that playable, but it still looks pretty garbage. And this render quality has a setting of 0.66, which is a little bit better, and I consider this, this is actually starting to look pretty decent. Some people might not think this looks bad at all. If I close the UI off here, you can see this doesn't really look too different from what we were experiencing earlier, um, but it still is maybe a little bit blurrier. We can even go to 0.75. Now, this is starting to become, you know, more indistinguishable from what we were experiencing in the first place, so um, you know, you might not even be able to tell a difference between this and what we were looking at earlier, and we've still gained, you know, around 50 FPS or so. So at 0.75 here, um, you know, the game is looking pretty good. You can go higher if you want, if you still don't think this looks good, but this is, to me, starting to become pretty indistinguishable um, from what we were looking at earlier. And the shaders just still look absolutely marvelous and immaculate, and we've gained, you know, about 50 FPS or so from changing that. We don't need to mess with surface options and in water you can turn off water parallax if you think that's going to help you, but other than that, we are pretty much done here. I think the game is running very, very well. You know, we're getting, you know, almost 200 FPS here, 200 at, at certain points in time. Most people, you know, are gonna be targeting maybe 30 or 60 FPS and this is now when you can go back into your video settings and increase, um, your render distance here to maybe see really far in the distance and this is how you would want to play Minecraft with these shaders. I might be able to go as far as to, to play this at 32 chunks here on my more powerful PC with these ray tracing shaders. And yeah, I'm still getting really, really good frame rates while rendering in a lot of stuff here. So yeah, that looks like we have really uh, changed our settings for the better here because I, I still think the game looks almost indistinguishable um, from when it did when I first started the video. So we've really improved things here, I think. Again, you guys are going to have lower end PCs, so you might only be able to run 10 chunks or even 8 chunks at the start like this, but you might still have, you know, around 60 FPS, 30 FPS or so. So, yes, everybody, I am at Video Productions. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think in the comments if you guys have any questions or need any help. You know, I'm here uh, to try to help you guys, but yeah, this is how to make a beautiful ray tracing or path tracing um, Seuss shaders, um, work and run well on low-end PCs. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. I'm at Video Productions. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.